A terrific shortage of machinery in Korea hinders economic development. Locomotives that were surplus property in Europe have been shipped to Korea by the United States. During the war, machinery was taken from Korea to Japan, and what remained has badly deteriorated. This is the first of 100 locomotives presented to the Korean government by the United States. The country's transportation system has been improved by merging the three privately owned railroads into one national system. Although Korea lacks machine tools, it is producing whatever it can. This locomotive is the first turned out in Korea's shops. Koreans were rightfully proud of this feat. For the first time, they had acted in a supervisory capacity in heavy industry, a role formerly filled exclusively by the Japanese. Besides rebuilding and reorganizing the railroad system, Korea is giving attention to another channel of transportation, its roads. Part of a large public works program is the building of a 320-mile all-weather highway crossing from the north to the south of the American zone. Some of the road is hard-surfaced, but mostly it is a 21-foot-wide first-class gravel road. Although most of Korea's hydroelectric power is located in the northern zone, what little power exists in southern Korea is being utilized to the fullest. Power development is necessary to reduce the dependency upon the north and to make South Korea as self-sufficient as possible. A shortage of replacement parts continues to hinder industrial recovery. Most of Korea's machinery is either dilapidated or obsolete. The majority of Korea's industrial plants were built to use Japanese designed and produced machinery requiring replacement and spare parts from Japan. Until Japan recovers sufficiently in the manufacture of spare parts, replacements cannot be expected. It will be a long time, too, before the country has sufficient timber for its needs. Each year during tree planting week, young trees are planted on Korea's barren hills. In the past, Korea's forests had been badly damaged. Timber had been cut for fuel, and some nursery areas had been converted into crops to provide food. The American military government is encouraging forest preservation. Much lumber is needed in Korea, especially for housing. Prefabricated houses at low cost have been planned under the American administration. The designs utilize the most up-to-date methods of home construction while preserving some of the spirit of Korean architecture of the past. Work is proceeding as rapidly as possible, dependent upon availability of new materials. The housing program provides homes for the homeless as well as employment to many thousands. Refugee farmers will be established in these homes and provided with small tracts of farmland nearby. The first of these new projects has gone up on a former Jap airfield near the capital city of Seoul. In such housing developments as these, there is hope for sturdy and wholesome community life throughout Korea. In the summer of 1946, cholera brought by refugees from China broke out in the port city of Pusan. Korean workers supervised by Americans sprayed the areas with DDT. The disease was soon brought under control. Medical authorities are stressing prevention as the best method of maintaining public health. In all American occupied areas, inoculations against typhoid have become standard procedure. An ounce of prevention can be exceedingly painful. More nurses are being trained than ever before. 
the nursing profession is being given prestige in an attempt to raise health standards. Before, nurses were merely servants to doctors. New concepts in the care of patients are being introduced. Modern health methods have reached Korea in previous years through American missionaries who were very active in Korean life. Now, during the American occupation, the smallest and the largest clinics are brought into close contact with the very latest in medical procedure. Babies are getting very special care. In a pediatric clinic, a doctor goes to work using the world's accumulated knowledge about babies. However, the profound thoughts a baby thinks at this age, the world may never know. The military government is helping in the retraining of a Korean police force along western lines. When the Japanese police had been removed, and with them the much-hated thought control section, replacements were needed quickly. Training for police work goes on at a new National Police Academy. School facilities have grown to a point where classes of 1,450 policemen have been graduated every five weeks. American authorities have helped the National Police in setting up their first police laboratory. Crime detection is now aided by the microscope, the X-ray, and other methods of modern science. A women's division of the National Police has been organized and new recruits are being trained. They will be concerned primarily with all problems affecting women and children. The emphasis in education under Japanese rule was upon teaching the Japanese language. But Koreans have an unquenchable thirst for education and a profound respect for educated men. During Japanese rule, they continued to teach their children the Korean language as well, at home. Since the close of the war, the number of children attending school has gone up 50%. This figure will increase as more schools, teachers, and textbooks become available. 17,000 Japanese teachers have been dismissed, and Korean teachers have been put through a re-education course. Many more are needed. From these classrooms, Korea hopes someday for an abundance of men whose background and training will suit them for administering their government. Korean children are among the most fun-loving in the world. This is a trick that many Korean children study and master. The people can forget food problems, political turmoil, and other worries upon occasion. Crowds of thousands turn out for a track meet between Americans and Koreans. An American importation of many years ago is baseball. To Koreans as well as Americans, Babe Ruth is a hero of long standing. Both countries have in common a deeply imbued belief in the principle of fair play. During the occupation thus far, almost one million Japanese have been evacuated, and almost two million Koreans returned from overseas. Koreans have been introduced to jobs held by the Japanese, and Japanese and pro-Japanese Koreans have been removed. A police force has been built numbering 25,000 men. Today, schools, courts, railroads, and other institutions are all Korean. The United States is attempting to carry out its half of the Cairo Declaration and the Moscow Agreement. It hopes to make Korea a free and independent land where democracy can live and flourish.